it's not, it's not, it's just not. Hello my sweet friends, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I've got for you episode two of Making Ugly Vintage Look Cute. By popular demand, it is back and I have seven pieces to style up for you today. I'm styling the pieces up on the fly. There's no premeditated styling going on here. So let us jump in with the first item. This, my friends, is a Vera Wang dress. Now, if you are familiar, Vera Wang started out as a wedding gown designer. Very high end, very Fifth Avenue, New York, and she's quite expensive, my friends. And then I think she diffused into wedding guest outfits and formal wear, I guess, that kind of thing. So when I came across this dress, the first thing that attracted me to it was the label, that Vera Wang label. So the label is actually simply Vera by Vera Wang. So that's her diffusion line, which I believe is more affordable, but still expensive. I would say this dress ran for a few hundred dollars. Okay, so I do like the color palette. I think it's soft and muted and I like that, but there's not much else I like about this dress. It's this very generic V neckline, which isn't the deep V that I love, which I find so attractive. It's kind of, anyway, blah, right? So this frill cap sleeve, again, kind of generic. In fact, this whole silhouette is very generic and very dated to me. I, I don't love it, but I do love the print. That's what I love. The length of this dress isn't bad. I can work with a midi length. What I can't work with is this silhouette. It's not a flare, which I love in my skirts, my midi skirts. I love a flared skirt. It's not even a shift shape. It's not boxy and straight. It's kind of that in between, which is just so blah. It's just, I'm not into it. I normally don't utilize belts and ties that come with the pant or the dress or whatever it is. But anyway, we shall see how we go with this piece. All right, you guys, I don't mind the way this dress turned out. There are a couple of things that I wanted to change right off the bat, and that was the tie that the dress came with and also the length of the dress. So I tried different belts of my own with this dress and none of them worked because this fabric is so delicate. It kind of bunched up underneath the belt and created a very unflattering silhouette. So I just kept the tie that it came with, kind of bloused up the fabric over the tie so that it not only hid the tie, but created a shorter length. And when it came to the styling, I kept within the formal vibe of this dress, but I wanted to soften it up a little bit, make it look a little bit more wearable and romantic. So that's why I went with this vintage pashmina in this gorgeous pastel blue. I thought it tied in really nicely with the pastels in the dress. It brought out those blue tones in the dress. And then the vintage velvet clutch, I thought was a nice touch to bring out that darkness in the dress. Those little pops of black that you see within the dress, I wanted to tie in with the clutch. And so for the shoe, I went against the expected heel and instead went for a more modern ankled sock booty that I think just works beautifully with the dress. It's cream and there's cream in the dress. It's soft, so it keeps the dress looking soft and the whole look looking romantic. It's elongating on the leg. It's not too heavy for the dress as well. And I just think it's a very modern look. So all in all, I guess I'm pretty happy with the way this look turned out. I don't think it looks so dated anymore. It looks quite pretty and modern and I guess kind of cute. Next up is this vintage blouse. Now I am a fan of vintage blouses. I have a collection, but this one, I'm not into. It's just not attractive to me. I find it kind of daggy. I do like the color though. I'm not really into this embroidery on the collar and the button placket. It does have a wide sleeve and that's something, but it is kind of daggy, right? The shape, it's just, it's not, it's not, it's just not. So this vintage blouse is by Ricky Renee Sydney. It's a size 12 and I do come across this label quite often when I'm thrifting. So for this look, 
I decided to go kind of fancy lady, just like the vibe of this shirt. I wanted to button it right up to the collar because it has a beautiful statement collar that I wanted to show off. And I also buttoned the cuffs to just give this look a very polished, groomed feel. The only thing that is grounding this outfit is the vintage Levi's denim. Making it a little bit more rough around the edges is the raw hem and the way that I've cuffed the jeans. The Levi's are high-waisted and quite wide, so almost like a balloon shape. And I think just cuffing them in that way gives them that modern feel. I just think this shirt with the color that it is, this kind of very ruby red color, it just gives me old world, classic, polished vibes. I didn't want to tomboy this look. I wanted to keep it very feminine. So I think the black bag, the black belt, and the almost black shoe is an old school way of styling. Back in the day, if a woman didn't style her bag to tie in with her shoe or her belt, she was thought of as, you know, unstylish. I remember it was a big thing. I remember my mum being into this, you know, styling thing. You know, the shoe had to match the bag. So I decided to kind of go with that, you know, for this very old school blouse. The bag is vintage Chanel and the slingbacks are not Chanel. They are a great dupe though and I am completely in love with them. The bag, the belt and the shoe just made this outfit look very classy lady. And for an extra layer, I threw on this gorgeous vintage scarf that I thrifted not long ago in the almost exact same red color but it also has some blue and black the black picking up the accessories, the blue just tying in with the jeans. So every piece in this look is vintage except for the shoe. The shoe is modern, but it still has a vintage vibe. So it's quite a departure for me to go head to toe fancy lady. Inherently, my first thought was actually to pair the blouse with distressed denim, converse, and a cool crossbody bag. But I went the complete opposite, trying to branch out a little bit. But anyway, this next piece was kind of like a fatal attraction. There was something I loved about it and there was something I hated about it. So it was quite polarizing. Okay, what I do love about it is the fresh white of this shirt and the primary colors in the embroidery. What I don't like about this shirt is that it reminds me somehow of a clown. I don't know why I get clown vibes, but I do and I am not a fan of clowns. I think they are very scary. And also you guys, this sleeve. Oh my God, when I find something that I love and then I see the sleeve and it's this sleeve, I'm crushed because this sleeve is awful. It's, it's really awful, this three quarter sleeve and the wide three quarter sleeve. It doesn't even taper in delicately just under the elbow. It's just not even a balloon sleeve. It's just, it's just awful. I do love the primary colors in this embroidery. It kind of also looks like it could be a pajama top, right? But this is vintage also. This is by Cockatoo Country, size 14, and it's 100% linen made in Thailand. You guys, I think this look is so cute. I really do. Well, first off, what I had to do was change the length of that sleeve. I wanted to transform the sleeve into a short sleeve. Not only more modern, but more flattering. And because it was quite a boxy shape, when you tuck it in, it gives it that oversized look, which I love, right? There really wasn't much I could do about the neckline of the shirt, so I just buttoned it right up and left the collar as is, and I think it looked cute. I really do. I love the pops of primary colors in this otherwise very plain white shirt. So I decided to follow through with that and keep the whole outfit white and just have a pop of color in my accessories. So there's the pop of red in my bag. This bucket bag has been a workhorse in my wardrobe. I have one in black also. I thought it tied in so cute with the red little flower on the shirt. And then my high top converse to tomboy this outfit. And again, in my converse, there's red and blue. So it picks up the red and the blue flower in the shirt. It is a really simple look. It's not overstyled. It's really wearable. I think the top 
looks completely modernized. I don't see that clown element in this shirt anymore. I see a fresh, slightly quirky, but cute shirt. And I just love the way this turned out, you guys. This next piece, my friends, I just love the color. And pretty much that's it. This color, this cobalt blue is stunning, if you ask me. But there's not much else I like about this shirt. Let us discuss all the things I do not like. This crinkle fabric is just not my vibe. It's just not my vibe. These buttons, although I am usually such a big fan of vintage buttons, they're kind of, I don't know, they're not attractive. I don't like them. There's, there's no delicacy in the button. It kind of has an awkward shape as well. It looks like it, it's gonna curve in and not tuck in nicely. I don't like anything that tapers in. I love a boxy, oversized fit. Anyway, not, not, really, not really sure how I'm gonna go with this one, but this one is Vintage Katie's. It's a size eight, made in Australia, and it's a rayon polyester blend. All right, you guys, there is not much I liked about this top, except for the color. It just doesn't have much going for it. I decided to keep it buttoned right up to the collar once again because it just didn't look great unbuttoned. These buttons are quite obnoxious and they're very out there. Didn't do much with the shirt at all in regards to styling except to tuck it into my black trousers. So I went with black trousers because I love cobalt blue and black together. I love blue and black together, period. And I decided to bring in white as well to freshen up this look because it can otherwise look a bit too heavy. Blue on black, they're quite bold and dark colors and so the white freshens up the outfit. I don't normally style with more than three colors. I find if you add more than three, it becomes a little bit confusing, but I do love how the white just freshens up this look. So the black trousers are quite modern. I left them uncuffed and the black loafers I think are elongating and classic and it's kind of a very conservative, corporate looking outfit. And I think the white knit thrown over the shoulders and the white in this vintage bag, I just love the way those two pieces change the look of this outfit because without the knit and the bag, if I had stuck with the black bag, it would have been quite, you know, corporate and boring, which is so not my style. I'm not a corporate dresser at all. So all in all, I gotta say, I'm quite pleased with the way this look turned out. I did not think I was gonna be able to style this shirt and make it look cute because it's just not attractive. Alrighty, my friends, another blouse, another short sleeve blouse. But this one I do like because it's oversized, it's boxy, and I love the polka dot. I am always a sucker for a polka dot. But this colorway, I am not too sure about. It's not burgundy, it's more like a plum kind of color, and the polka dot is a beautiful blue color. It's a really pretty blue color, but it kind of reminds me of a polo top. So I don't know how I'm gonna style this one. I think I wanna make it look casual. I'm not sure, I'm not sure. But this one is vintage. It's by GS and it's a size 14 and it's polyester and not to mention you guys, it's quite sheer. And I do not wear sheer things, my friends. So the sheer quality of this top is something I'm definitely not into. But anyway, we shall see. We shall see how I go with this one. So with this blouse, I decided to style it unbuttoned, although I do believe it looks very cute buttoned, right up to the collar, very prim and proper. I just wanted to go a different way with this top. So I wanted to bring out the beautiful soft blue polka dot in this burgundy plum colored top. So I had the perfect pair of Bermuda shorts in the same color and I thought they looked beautiful together. So although I've got two vintage pieces styled in together, there's not much juxtaposition. I went for a fancy lady bag, my Coach Parker backpack. I just love the rich brown tones in this bag. You've got some lighter browns and then the richer browns and then the gold hardware. And I just think it's such a gorgeous bag that you can dress up or down. And so with the belt, 
I went, you know, with the same kind of vibe. This belt was actually my son's and no longer fits him. And I love the man style vibes. So I thought it just worked beautifully with the bag. And then the chunky loafer, although it's modern, again, it's very vintage, man style, you know, and the tones in the shoe are very similar to that of the bag and the belt. So when I look at this outfit as a whole, I can see the very fancy lady elements with the blouse, the bag, the Bermuda shorts. But then I also get that man style vibe with the loafers and the belt. And I think that's my juxtaposition in this outfit. Although it's very polished, it's not very down to earth. You still have juxtaposition within the outfit, if you know what I mean. I could have worn a pair of faded blue denim jeans and I think it would have picked up that beautiful blue polka dot as well and given it a more modern edge than these trouser style Bermuda shorts. I found a Liz Claiborne piece in my local op shop and I get extremely excited when I find Liz Claiborne because it's really nostalgic for me. Back when I was 19, 20, say, in my 20s, I used to buy Vogue, Vogue USA, and Liz Claiborne was a big deal. She was in Vogue, and I used to love a lot of her pieces because they were quite nautical and classic and Parisian looking and then she had a kind of sport line as well. Anyway you guys, I found a Liz Claiborne vest and of all pieces it had to be a vest. A piece that I do not wear because it does not suit me. Especially one in this shape and length. It just, it's just not going to work on my body. I know it. I just know it. But I had to get it because it's Liz Claiborne. Except I do not know what size this is. I cannot see a size, but it is Liz Claiborne collection, and this is made in the USA. So when I look at this piece, you guys, it feels quite heavy. Is this tapestry? What is this? It's got those tapestry vibes, but it's not really. It's a flower print. It's kind of muted, but it's also, I'm getting Western vibes. I'm getting vintage vibes. I'm picking up a lot of different vibes. And then it's just plain silk on the back and it's lined inside as well. So I don't know how I'm gonna go with this piece, you guys. This piece I struggled with, I wanted to style it as a top. Tuck it inside some denim or even leave it out, but it just wasn't right. It's quite large under the arm. It's not a very malleable fabric that I can tuck in. So in the end, it worked as a layering piece for this outfit. Now, if you look closely in this vest, you will see that there is a very beautiful purpley blue color. And so I decided to pair it with a blouse that would bring out that color and this is a gorgeous vintage blouse that I thrifted quite a while back and then of course blue denim I mean it's keeping within the spectrum of that violet blue color I just thought blue denim and a darker blue denim would work better than say a faded blue denim and again they're a straight cut they're quite vintage looking I've rolled up the cuff once it's got that raw hem so it's kind of modern and rough around the edges so so this piece was definitely giving me warm cozy vibes you know it's not really a summer piece so the accessories I chose were muted gray beigey tones in fabrics that are also quite cozy and warm so the moccasin style boot I think just pairs so beautifully with this vest and the bag ties in with the shoe they are the same beautiful beigey grayy color so I went for this clutch which I've had for quite a while because it ties in with the shoe but also I didn't want a strap to detract from this vest. I kind of like the way this one turned out. I think it's an improvement. I think I like this vest more styled this way than looking at it on the hanger. The final piece, my friends, is the only bottom in this collection and that is this pleated skirt. It's vintage, it's in this beautiful pink color but I'm not so sure about this pleated skirt. This waistband looks like it's gonna be really big on me, but these pleats are very literal, right? They're not soft, they're too 
they're too prominent. They're a bit daggy. I don't know. I don't know. But this flat part here on the waist is very quintessential to a vintage pleated skirt. But usually there's a bit more length. And that also kind of put me off a little bit. This fabric, I'm not into. It's quite stiff. It looks as though it might puff out and not sit nicely on the waist. I mean, you can kind of see it there already. This one is by George B. It's a size 20, a size 20, you guys. And it's 100% polyester made in Australia. I am not one to pass up a vintage pleated skirt, you guys, especially in this color. But the fabric, the shape, the style of pleat in this skirt are not really doing it for me. But let us see how I do with this piece. I am pretty chuffed with the way this last piece turned out because I did not think I was gonna be able to style it. Because of the waistband, it's just so puffy and big and voluminous. I mean, it's meant for a much larger size frame than me. I still think I made it work. The one thing that I wanted to do was to show off the elastic waist in this skirt and make it kind of a statement. I didn't want to hide the fact that it's an elastic waisted skirt. I think it turned out cute with this black Zara top. It's very avant-garde with a big, huge frill. The t-shirt is so long, I tucked it in the skirt. You can't even tell because the skirt is so voluminous. I just kept it all simple with black accessories. The black booty is one I've had for ages. The bucket bag is the black version of my Leona Edmiston bag, which I think just looks so adorable with this outfit. And I guess all these different elements, the vintage, the avant-garde, the tough looking boots and then the very prim and proper Parisian bag somehow all together look cute in my opinion. My first instinct was to go with an oversized knit cover up the waist entirely but it wasn't a good look it didn't work the skirt is the only color in the outfit and because it's paired with the black it just makes that gorgeous beautiful pink pop so much more so yeah I love this outfit. So my friends, that is a wrap for episode two of Making Ugly Vintage Look Cute. Please let me know which outfit or which piece was your favorite. I'd really like to know. And hopefully you guys enjoyed the styling in this video and you thought I did good. But anyway, you guys, that is a wrap for this episode. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and I really hope I see you in my next one.